Okay friends, it's time to get started on our job. One of the first things you want to do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheels off the ground with the suspension hanging. After that, assuming you have hubcaps, carefully remove them. Once that's out of the way, we're going to continue on to each of our 17 millimeter lug studs. Keep in mind, these are lug studs, so as you remove them, they're going to have a shank with threading. When you remove the last one, there's going to be nothing holding the wheel on. Now, once you've taken out one, go ahead and put it in a couple threads, and then you can remove the other four. <laughs> remove your wheels, set it aside. Now that the wheel's off of there, we have a nice clear view of our left front caliper. Let's make our way to the flex hose right here. We'll pinch that. Now we can make our way down to the mounting point. This is the banjo bolt. We're gonna go ahead and loosen this with an 11 millimeter. You're gonna notice brake fluid will come out. Make sure you're wearing hand and eye protection and have a collection bucket under this area. All right. Now that I have it broken free, I'm just going to lightly close this and we can move along to the two areas where our slider pins are located. What you're going to notice is you have plastic covers that cover the pins themselves. So let's just go ahead and use a small pry bar. We'll pop those out of the way. We'll give them a quick inspection because we will be reusing these. Those look fine. Now behind those, to remove the slider pins, you're going to have to use a 7 millimeter Allen head socket. Remove that slider, we'll give it a quick inspection and set it aside. Now we're going to go ahead and take the caliper off of the knuckle here. To do that, we're going to roll it down from the top, and then once it's rolled a little bit, we'll lift it up and off of the bottom. Let's move along to removing the pads. Give them a quick inspection as you do, and set them aside. Now we can make our way back to that banjo bolt. It should be nice and loose. Let's go ahead and remove it. There it is, friends. Before you recycle this, make sure you drain all of the brake fluid out of it. Okay, friends, now it's time to get ready to install our brand new caliper. Before we do anything, let's apply a thin amount of high temperature caliper lube to the piston. After that's well lubricated, move along to the backside of each of the two ears along the front. This is gonna help with vibration dampening and noise reduction overall. Now we can go ahead and grab our pads. Looking at the back side of the pads, you can see exactly how these need to go into either the piston or even the front side of this. It's going to be the same process. We're just going to take it and try to line up the three ears along the back. What you're going to notice is you're going to have to try to squeeze in one of them as you work it into place. Now once that's in there, let's continue on, do the same thing with the outer and then we can get this in position on the knuckle over the rotor. Now we can put this in position on the knuckle, slide it right on over that rotor, and where you want to pay attention to is down along here. Looking at the caliper itself, you can see that it has an ear right along here. The pad has an ear that goes along the other side. In between, there should be a slot. You want to make sure you fit this right in between. Now that we have it in this position, let's have a look at our slider pins. Now for the slider pins, you want to make sure you wipe down the entire smooth shaft area. After you're sure it looks clean and free of any debris, let's go ahead and re-lubricate it with a little bit of high temperature caliper lube. Now
Now we can slide it behind the rotor into each of the caliper ports. Just press that right in there. Now we're going to start this into its corresponding hole by hand with a small ratchet. We definitely want to make sure we don't cross thread it in. Once it's started, we can continue on doing the same thing to the other. Now you can torque each of them to 22 foot-pounds. Reinstall your protective covers. Time to move along to the flex hose. Let's look at that banjo bolt. Generally, you're gonna see that there's a crush washer on either side of the flex hose. We're just gonna go ahead and try to get those off of there, and then we can go ahead and clean the flex hose itself. All right, there's one. As you can tell, it's completely mangled, which is fine, because you're gonna be replacing with brand new ones anyway. Go ahead and recycle that. Now we can remove the banjo bolt from the flex hose. You want to also pay attention to the banjo bolt. Typically, one of your crush washers is going to get stuck on it. Make sure you remove it. Inspect your banjo bolt. Make sure it looks like it's still in good condition. Inspect the flex hose. Make sure there's no dirt and debris on either side. Now it's time to start dealing with this banjo bolt again. Let's take one of our brand new crush gaskets. We're going to slide it right over that banjo bolt all the way down to the end. Now we can take the flex hose. We're going to put the banjo bolt right on through there. Take the other crush gasket, put it on the other side. Now you should have one on both sides of the flex hose. Now we can go ahead and put the flex hose with the banjo bolt assembly right up to the caliper, start it in by hand, and tighten it up. Now when we're putting this in, you only want to tighten it until it feels like it bottoms out. After that, just take it another eighth of a turn. Make sure it's tight. Remove your hose pliers and let's get ready to gravity bleed the caliper. To start the process, let's make your way under the hood. Right next to the battery, you're going to find your master cylinder. That's where your brake fluid is going to be located. You want to make sure it's up to par, full up to the max, and if you do need to add any, you need to make sure you use DOT4 brake fluid. To start the gravity bleed, we're just going to go ahead and open this up, and now we can make our way back down to the bleeder screw. Now your bleeder screw is going to be located on the back side of the caliper up along the top. It should have a little boot on it. Go ahead and remove that, set it aside because you will be reusing it. Now you can use a 10 millimeter to open up the bleeder screw. Wait a couple seconds for fluid to make its way all the way down and force the air up and out. All right, so now the next thing that we're gonna wanna do here is go ahead and do a quick gravity bleed. To do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and open this up. Once again, we need to make sure we have a collection bucket underneath this area. What we're paying attention to is waiting for a steady trickle of fluid to start coming out of this. Once you feel as though you've got fluid coming out, go ahead and close it off and we can continue on with a manual bleed. Now to do a manual bleed, what you're going to want to have is a second person inside of the vehicle. That person inside of the vehicle is going to go ahead and pump up the brakes approximately three times and on the last time they're going to hold it down to the floor as much as they can. When they do that, they're going to tell me they're holding and I'll open this bleeder screw. We're going to be watching for fluid to come out of this, but you're also going to see a lot of air bubbles. We need to continue this process several times until you don't see any more air bubbles and all you see is a steady stream of fluid only. Go ahead and pump the brakes, please. Now we'll go ahead and close it. Go ahead and pump the brakes again.
Now, as you can see on that one, the majority of it was fluid, but there was still an air bubble that made its way out. That tells me we need to continue. Go ahead and pump the brakes, please. As you can see, there was no air that came out of it on that last time. That tells me that we should have all the air out of the system. We can continue on by cleaning up our mess. And then reapplying our protective boot. Let's make our way back under the hood and double check that master cylinder. Like I said before, you want to make sure it's up to the maximum line. If it needs to be added to, add some DOT4 brake fluid. Once you're sure it's up to par, go ahead and close it off and make sure it's nice and tight. After that, you can go ahead and close the hood, and let's go ahead and get that wheel back on the vehicle. All right, now we can go ahead and get our wheel back up on here. Let's line up all of our holes. We can put in all five of our lug studs. We'll bottom them out, get the wheel safely back on the ground, and then we'll torque each of these to 89 foot-pounds. Torqued. Of course, if you have a hubcap, go ahead and put it on now. Pay attention to the valve stem hole. Go ahead and line that up and push it on. Okay, friends, we got our caliper in there. What's left to do now? Now, typically, of course, you're going to want to take it for a road test and make sure the brakes function properly. Thanks for watching.